Well, hi there. I'm Carol Lutzinger. Welcome to Science Stuff for today. I thought we would talk about all of this stuff today, and you're probably going to say, what in the world is all of that? So let's take a look at what I have on the table for us to think about today. I have a lemon, an orange, a lime, a green bell pepper, a nice juicy tomato on the vine, a Roma tomato that's not on the vine, an ear of corn, a nice green cucumber that got way too big to be a pickle, a box of raisins, which are, if you don't know, dried up grapes. I have some sunflower seeds, some pistachio nuts, some cashew nuts, some lima beans. I have a plum, which if you dry the plum, it becomes a prune. I have some cherries and some green beans. Now, what in the world has all that got to do with science stuff? Well, the food that we eat is science. And so I wanted to talk about food we eat, science stuff, and science fair projects. <laughs> yes, science fair projects. You get to do those this year. Oh. Yes, you get to. Um, it's not that you have to, but I hope that you want to. So for today's program, we're going to be talking about doing a science fair project. Where do you get ideas to do it? And how can you use stuff from the grocery store for a science fair project? So let's, let's think about it. First of all, scientists are always asking questions. And that means you are a scientist because I know you're always asking somebody a question. Why do I have to go to bed? Why do I have to eat that? Why do I have to wear that? Why, 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 why? And that's what scientists do. They ask why. Why is the sky blue? Why is the water cold? Why is it cooler in the shade than out in the sun? and they go look for answers. Now some answers you can find by going to the library. That's what I would have done when I was your age, but nowadays you Google it. Why is the sky blue? And Google sends back all of these things for you to know about and you can take your pick. But I thought we would narrow things down today and talk about seeds and fruits and vegetables and how it connects to science. So I did bring some packets of seeds. I have some lettuce, carrots, and squash, okay? So if you're thinking about, oh, I have something else down here too. I have cotton. Yes, cotton. Did you know that the cotton that comes out of the plant has seeds in it? And they're tough to get out of the cotton, but if you pick hard enough, you can get a seed out of the cotton bowl. And I'm just going to set that seed right there because we've talked about cotton before. And uh, I, well, it wants to stick to my fingers. So all of these things have to do with growing things, and growing things have to do with the amount of sunlight, the kind of soil you have, how much water it gets. If, if you remember, this year we started out having a drought, and everybody was worried about the rain, and then we got days and days and days of rain, and people said, oh, it's too much rain, stop rain. So all of those things have an effect on whether we have food to eat or not. So farmers pay really close attention to the weather and rainfall and the kind of soil that they have. So, so let's get started on science fair projects. The first thing you have to do is think about what are you curious about? And it could be anything. And like I said, some science answers you can find on the internet or in a book. Some you can ask your parents or uncles or teachers or classmates even. But some of them, you have to do experiments to figure out what the answer is going to be, what the result is going to be. And so all of those things that you think about 
what am I curious about? And if I have all of these food things here that, that have grown in a field somewhere, I might wonder, hmm, how many seeds are in it one lemon? And then I could, well, I could cut that lemon open and I could squeeze that out and count the number of seeds that are in it. And then I might say, well, I wonder if every lemon has the same amount of seeds. Well, there's no way you could find out if every lemon has the same amount of seeds. But you could take a random sample and you could buy five lemons at the grocery store. And your question might be, will all five lemons have the same amount of seeds? Because remember, you cannot possibly check every single solitary lemon on planet Earth. Scientists take random samples, okay? So you keep that in mind. So you could do that about any of these things. Any of, how many seeds does each one have? Which, which one of these would have the most seeds? And if you think about it, have you ever opened an ear of corn or do you just get your corn out of the can or the frozen food bag? A corn cob is surrounded by beautiful green leaves and they're in layers. And so if you're going to eat the corn, you have to peel off those leaves. And if you like tamales, you know that dried corn shucks make a really good wrap for a tamale. And so if we keep unwrapping our little ear of corn and each one of these is called an ear of corn why i don't know maybe because it sticks out of the side of the stalk and the valley grows a lot of corn we grow a lot of citrus uh, lemons limes oranges grapefruit now as i'm getting down to the corn you see the, all of this silky material here um, and inside is all of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Boy, this is making me hungry. Look at all this beautiful corn in here. And all of this silk is part of the corn. We don't eat it, um, but it sure is nice. And it is very silky. So now we have some white kernels of corn and some yellow kernels of corn. And if this corn is allowed to just dry, each one of these little kernels would be a seed. And imagine when the farmer or you put the seed in the soil and it grows out of one stalk that grows to be at least as tall as I am, there's 10 or more ears of corn on that multiplied by each one of these kernels. Isn't that amazing? But it, and you see how neat they are there, every, every row. It's just this like, here, here's your rows and here's your columns, just like the math. But this is such a beautiful ear of corn. And each one of those is a seed. And when you eat it, you're getting all the nutrition that the plant stored in it, just from collecting water from the soil, minerals from the soil, and vitamin D from the sunlight. Wow, isn't that amazing? So. That could be one of your questions. How many kernels is on one ear of corn? And you might say 50. Well, you can tell that's more than that right away. But that could be your question. But you couldn't possibly check every ear of corn. Now, the sunflower seeds, you might like to eat sunflower seeds. I know the birds do in my backyard. Sunflower seeds come from those big yellow and brown flowers that you see growing in the fields out alongside the road. Uh, pistachio nuts come from a tree. And, and when you pop it open, you've got the little seed inside. And when you're eating a nut, you're eating a seed. Wow. And the cashews, too. They grow in a cluster. And, and somebody... somebody pulls the nuts out of the tree and, and opens them up and somebody goes and has a snack. So here we have all this stuff. So your question might be, do, do lemons and limes have the same amount of seeds? I don't know. Remember we said we had to just take a random sampling. So in your, in your science fair 
project. You usually keep a notebook, and we're going to pretend that this is my notebook. And I have questions, questions that I want to find answers to. And I, this might be my question. How many seeds are in one lemon? How many seeds are in something with a question mark? Now, after I've had that and I've thought a while and I've thought, well, I really don't like that question. I really want another question. You know, you just, you may have other questions. Does um, lettuce grow faster in soil whatever or soil whatever? And I'm just going to pick one, and that's the project that I'm going to do. So once I've thought of a question that I want to find the answer to, then I have my hypothesis. Now, we've talked about hypotheses. I'm sure your teacher has talked about it already, too. The hypothesis might be, hmm, I think, I think, A lemon and a lime have the same number of seeds. And that would be my hypothesis. Now, I'm only going to take a random sampling, remember? I'm not going to take all the lemons and limes off of all the trees in the world. So my random sampling is going to be, you would need to do at least five if you were doing this for school. But since we're doing this for now, I'm only having one lime and one lemon. And let's see, where did I put my little handy dandy knife? So you would ask your parents about using a knife and cut open the lime and count out the seeds. Now, I don't see any seeds in this lime, but let's see. Let's check the lime, I mean the lemon. Lemons are yellow, limes are green. So I see some seeds here in my lemon. There's one, two. Now the best thing to do would be to squeeze the lemon and, and uh, the, that makes the, the seeds come out. One, two, three, four. And I'm not sure about this lime. I don't want to make a mess here on the table. But that's how you do it. It's very simple. A science fair project doesn't need to be scary. The scariest thing is when your teacher says you have to do a science fair project. And there's all sorts of um, resources in the school library. There's resources on the internet. Your older brother and sister can tell you how to do one. Just don't do theirs. <laughs> you don't want to do theirs. You want to find out your answers for yourself. So um, science fair projects can be fun. After you've got your your seeds out, then you have to collect your data. And you might say on, on limes, lemons, and the number of seeds. Well, the first one had four, the second one had six. Um, um, let's just say, I'm just picking numbers, but you don't pick numbers, you count. And remember I said we had to have at least five? So, so there's what I've got for my limes and seven, six, five, six, and five, okay? So what I found out is, no, they don't have the same. And th this is where you explain. My data shows that I had this many limes, I had this many lemons, and 
That's your data. Then you have to tell somebody about it. And just because you keep it a secret, nobody knows about it, you gotta tell. And that's what scientists do. When they find out something, they tell the whole world. Sometimes they put it on the internet, sometimes they write it in journals, sometimes they tell it to the TV people. It just depends on how exciting it is. So your science fair project would be something that you're interested in, something that you have fun doing, and stick around and get the job done. Don't leave it half done. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.